In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a combo attack system using animation montages and notifies to trigger damage at the right moment. Let's get started. Open your character blueprint so we can start building the system. In the My Blueprint tab, head over to the variables and create a new boolean variable and name it is attacking. Now create another variable, which we're going to call attack montages. Change the type to anim montage object reference. Then we go to the details tab and make it an array. Drag out the press execution pin and connect it to a branch. Then bring the is attacking boolean of type get, pass it through a not boolean and connect it to the condition of the branch. Now from the true pin of the branch, we're going to connect it to a do end macro. You might need to uncheck the context sensitive to find it. Now the true goes into the enter. Then we're going to right click and add a custom event, which we're going to call reset attacks. Then we connect the execution pin into the reset of the do end. Next, grab your attack montages variable, pull out the pin and connect it to the length function. Take the output of the length and connect it to the end of the do end. Now take the exit pin from the do end and plug it into a sequence. We're going to get the den zero and connect it to a play montage. Now for the in a skeletal mesh component, we're going to get the mesh and just plug it here. And now for the index, we're going to go back into the do end, grab the counter output, connect it to a subtract. The other pin value is going to be one. And then the return value from this subtraction, it's going to go into the get copy. And then we get the output from the get a copy into montage to play. Now from the execution of the play montage, drag out and call the set is attacking. We're going to set it to true. Finally, from the uncompleted pin of the play montage, also call set is attacking, but this time set it to false. Now let's go back to our sequence and take the then one pin and connect it to a branch. For the condition, get the counter and plug it into a equal. And the second value, it's going to be the length of our first attack montages. The return boolean is going to go into the condition. Now from the true execution pin, we're going to call the reset attack event. Next, get over to the functions and create a new one which we're going to call damage detection. From the execution pin, we're going to call a sphere trace for objects function. Next, we're going to look for the get socket location under parentheses mesh. And for the in socket name, we're going to promote it to a variable and we're going to call it bone damage detector. Now let's plug the return value on both the start and end. We're going to set the radius to something like 15, track the object types and search for make an array. Now for the array value, we're going to look for pawn and then for our draw debug type, we're going to change it to for duration to see what's happening. And then we're going to go to the out hit and connect it to a break hit result. We're going to click this drop down menu, get the hit actor and plug it into a is valid. Now this valid, we're going to connect the execution to the execution of the sphere trace for objects. And then we're going to move on into the is valid, into the is valid pin and plug it into a apply damage. The damage actor is going to be the hit actor from the break hit result. And the base damage, I'm going to put it on something like 10, but you can make a new variable and set it to whatever damage you want to apply. And then for a future tutorial, we're going to get the damage causer and set it to a reference to self. Now, after this apply damage, we're going to go ahead and print a string just to make sure that we're damaging the character. So I'm going to set it to damaging, click the drop down menu and change the text color to something like red. Now we get the output of the print string and get the function clear timer by function name. Now the function name is going to be the exact same one as the one that we are in right now, which in this case is damage detection. So here I had a misspell. I missed an A. So make sure that you have the exact same name as the function, because if not, it's not going to work. Now let's go to the macros tab and create a new one and name it execute anim notifies. Inside the macro, select the input. And in the details tab, we're going to add two inputs. The first one, we're going to name it execution and change the type to execute. And the second one, it's going to be notify name. And we're going to change the type to a name type. Now, before I forget, let's go back to the event graph. And right next to the play montage, we're going to go ahead and drag the execute anim notifies and connect the on notify begin into the execution and the notify name to notify name from the play montage. And now we can go back to the macro. First, select the output and we're going to drag it somewhere where it's not bothering us. Then we're going to get the notify name and connect it to a switch on name. Then the execution to the execution of the input. Then select the switch on name and uncheck this has default pin boolean. And then we're going to add seven pins. Now for each one of these, we're going to have a different name. But the name that you put into this one, it's really important. So my first one is going to be named move to with the space because it's also going to be case sensitive. The second one is going to be attack start. The third one attack end. 
the 41 LH, which is going to stand for left hand, the fifth one RH, that is going to stand for right hand, then RF, which is going to stand for right foot, and finally LF, which is going to stand for left foot. Now let's start with the limb notifies. For each one of them, we're going to want to drag one bone damage detector. We're going to get the set type, and then I'm just going to copy and paste it three more times. Let's get the LH execution and connect it to the first set. And this one, I'm going to name it hand underscore L. For this case, you have to make sure that this is the exact same name for the hand of your skeleton. Because if it's not, it's not going to work. Now, RH is going to go to the other set. And I'm going to name it hand underscore R. Then the third one goes to RF. And I'm going to name it foot underscore R. Then we get the LF and connect it to the last set. And this one is going to be foot underscore L. Now let's just straighten this note so it looks nicer. Now go to the attack start pin and connect it to a set timer by function name. The function name, it's going to be the damage detection. Remember, make sure that it has the exact same name. Then set the time to 0 0.01 and check the looping option. Then we're going to go back to the switch on name, get the attack end, drag it all the way next to the set timer by function name, and get the clear and invalidate timer by handle. Now get the handle and connect it to the return value. Now let's move on to the most complex part, the move to pin. This notify is what makes the system advance. It basically calculates a short movement towards the enemy during an attack. It also calculates the rotation. So this one is going to be a long one. If you don't want any assistance on the fighting style, then you can skip all the way to the next chapter. But this is really interesting and actually a lot of games use it. So you might want to stick to this one. From the move to pin, we're going to go all the way up to make some space and connect it to a sphere trace for objects. Then we're going to call the function get actor location and the return value, we're going to plug it into the start. Then we're going to get another return value from this and connect it to a add. Now let's make some room. Then we're going to get your follow camera and connect it to a get forward vector. Then we're going to right click the return value and a split stroke pin. We're going to get the X connected to a make vector, which is going to plug the X to the X. And now we get the Y to the Y and the return value is going to go to the addition. Now the result of this addition is going to go into the end of the sphere trace for objects. Then we're going to get the radius and set it to something like 50, then object types and make an array, which we're also going to call it for a pawn. And just to see what's happening, we're going to set the draw debug type to for duration. Now let's move on. We're going to get the execution pin and plug it into a branch. The condition is going to be the return value from the sphere trace for objects, then get the out hit and break the hit result. We get the drop down menu from the break hit result, get the hit actor and plug it into actor hashtag. For my case, I'm going to set the tag to enemy, but let's say your AI has a tag like zombie or something like that. You can just put it zombie there. Just remember that your enemy has to have this tag as you wrote it here. Then get the return value and plug it into a branch, get the true from the first branch and connect it to this new branch. And then we're going to get the second true and drag it a little bit further into a move component to function. This function, what it does is basically moves the component that you choose to the location that you set. It's kind of self-explaining the name. And now for the component, it's going to be the capsule component. And now the target relative location and the target relative rotation. This is where the fun starts. We're going to go back to our hit result. As you can see, it's too close to other programming. So let's make it a little bit more upward. Okay, now let's go back to the break hit result. So first get the impact point and connect it to a add. Then we get the capsule component again. From the capsule component, we're going to get the capsule radius. Then the capsule radius, we're going to multiply it by two. Let's bring it back a little bit. Probably not that back. Then the return value of this multiplication is going to go into another multiplication. And the B value is going to be the impact normal from the break hit result. Now the return value is going to go into the addition with the impact point. Now this addition, we're going to break it into a vector. And then we get the X value and connect it to a make vector as well as the Y value. For the C value, we're going to get the actor location, get the return value and break the vector. And now this Z, it's going to be the Z for the make vector. We can grab both of the break vectors with the make vector and move it a little bit closer to the move component too. And now this return value, it's going to be the target relative location. I know this part is kind of confusing, but trust me, it works. And now let's get the relative rotation. With this get actor location that we called, we're going to plug it into a find look at rotation. And for the target, we're going to go back to the break hit result, get the hit actor and connect it to a function get actor location. So remember that the first one, the target itself, 
and the target for the second get actor location is the head actor. So now connect the return value to the target. Now the return value from the find look at rotation is going to go into the function get rotation x vector. Then this return vector, we're going to right click it and split stroke pin. We're going to get the x and connect it to a make vector. Then the y to the y and the z, we're going to leave it on zero. Now the return value from this make vector, it's going to go into rotation from x vector function, which is going to return a rotator. Now this rotator, it's going to go into the target relative rotation. And now to finish things off, the overtime, we're going to set it to 0.1. So it doesn't take too long for the character to reach this destination. And now with this whole macro, your player not only detects the correct moment to apply damage using anim notifies, but also automatically moves and rotates towards the enemy in a smooth control way. Perfect for action heavy combat games. Now it's time to set up the anim notifies that will trigger our logic. I already have my attack animation montages ready and I'll link them down in the description so you can download and follow along. So let's open an animation montage. Once you open an animation montage, scroll down to find the notify track, usually labeled as one, which is this one. Right click the track, add notify, montage notify. The first notify will determine which bone we want to use for the damage detection. So select it and move it all the way to the beginning of the animation. On the details tab, you're going to change its name to RH. This first notify will determine which bone we want to use for the damage detection. It's important to understand what's happening in your animation. If the hit is coming from the right hand, use RH. For left hand, use LH. For right or left foot, use RF or LF respectively. Now let's move a little bit further into the animation wherever you want the move to to start. So we're going to right click the track again, add notify, montage notify, select the notify, change its name into move to. Reminder, notify names are case sensitive. So make sure they exactly match what you use in the macro switch earlier. Now move further into the animation to wherever you see that the character starts actually doing the hit. And again, on the notify track, we're going to right click on notify, montage notify, select it, go to the details tab, and name it attack start. Finally, at the end of the swing, around there, I would say, we can right click, add notify, montage notify, select the notify, go to the details tab, and then attack end. And that would be all the montages that we need for the animation to work properly. Now, instead of having to type each attack star, move to attack end, all of them again, we can just select all of them, control Z, open another of the montages like this one that I have here. Now make sure you highlight the notify track and here control V. And as you can see, I have all of them again. Now adjust to the timing of the animation. Like in this case, he's using the left hand. So instead of RH, I'm gonna put LH. And then we might need to readjust the move to and the attack start and a little bit of the attack finished. Now let's go back to the character blueprint and make sure that your attack montages array actually includes all the montages that you wanna use. So here, as you can see, I have none. So I just add two, which is going to be the two that I just made. And it's this one, the back fist montage and the hook head montage. Of course, if you have here, let's say, I don't know, like six, it's also going to work. So the way the blueprint works is that it's pretty customizable. If you add more elements to the array, they're all going to work. But in this case, I just have two. So let's compile, go back to the third person map and let's hit play. And now if we get close to the, an enemy and we attack it, as you can see, it's going to say damaging. Again, damaging. And that sphere that's around our body is the move to. There's like a little adjust into the location and the rotation. As you can see, if I'm looking around here, the character is gonna automatically rotate to the enemy. And as you'll notice, the fighting assist system works really well. It gives your attacks a polished, responsive feel. And that's it for this tutorial. If you found it helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.